And joining me live today is Sean Croxton from Underground Wellness. And Sean, I've been following you for oh, a couple of years now, and you've really provided me with some great content. And you have something new coming up, the digestion sessions that I want everyone to know about today. So, Sean, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Dr. Haley. You know, one of the things I was wondering about um, myself, well, you know, I don't have any real digestive problems. Myself, I, I don't have symptoms. I could kind of eat almost whatever I want. I don't have celiac disease. I don't have gluten intolerance. I don't have uh, irritable bowel or even acid reflux. Am I someone that would benefit from watching the digestion sessions? Who all should be watching these? I mean, if you have digestive issues, I certainly recommend that you do. If you know somebody who has digestive issues, I recommend that you re refer them to it. Um, you know, but if you don't have any digestive problems, I mean, you might be able to get away with not attending it, to be honest, just being perfectly honest with you. And you'll be able to get some good um, food recommendations there. But if you don't have constipation, you don't have diarrhea, you don't have celiac, you don't have gluten sensitivity, it may not be the event for you. But like I said, if you do want to get some good tips about your general health and which foods to eat, there are some, some presentations there that are just about food and how to keep inflammation down and how to prevent digestive issues in the digestion sessions. Yeah, you know, and I've watched some of the previews, some of the little short videos that you um, put out there, and I learned a little bit about probiotics, and uh, my family is certainly consuming probiotics re regularly. Maybe that's why I don't have digestive uh, issues. We've yeah. also been avoiding quite a bit, um, and again, maybe that's one of the reasons. Every now and then, I don't know about you, but uh, every now and then you end up at that party, and it gets kind of snuck in somehow, makes its uh -huh. way in. There are lots of hidden sources of gluten, that's for sure. Yep. But we've been avoiding it, and I do have one kid that seems to uh, have a lot less allergies when he avoids gluten completely. So. Yeah, and, we, and also to, to go back to, to your question, I mean, there are a lot of people out there who are dealing with uh, non-celiac gluten sensitivity who may not be having digestive problems because of it. I, I want to say it's 80% of the people with gluten sensitivity don't have digestive problems, so it may manifest itself as brain fog or fatigue or even depression as well and many other issues, joint problems as well. And so uh, even though you may not have a digestive problem itself, you're still going to be able to find some information over there if you are dealing with some of those issues because they may relate, relate right back to the gut. But I'll give you an example. Um, my talk with Dr. Datis Karazian, who's a brilliant man, uh, he talks about the connection between the gut and the brain. I mean, it's just a, it's a very direct communication between the two. And so if you feel like you're having issues going on in the head, in the brain, it could very much be stemming from what's going on in your gut. So there's some good information there. Yeah, you know, and you said something that I can relate to. Sometimes I eat a certain meal, and, you know, a half hour after that, I feel like I need a nap or I just can't quite think clearly. And, you know, it might be 10 or 15 minutes of kind of like one of those power naps, and all of a sudden I'm all charged up again. And I kind of wonder, boy, maybe I shouldn't be eating those foods. So mm -hmm. I, I will probably be learning a little bit about those things, I guess. Absolutely. Um, you know, another thing that kind of concerns me right now as we're going into flu season, I have heard that something like, 70 or 80 percent of our immune system is located in our guts. Yes. So I suppose from the standpoint of increasing immune, the immunity, pretty much everyone could benefit from eating a great diet. Absolutely. Um, and not just that, but pay, just paying very close attention to your gut health, uh, listening to the signs and signals from your gut. I mean, do you have bloating? Do you have constipation? Do you have infrequent diarrhea or frequent diarrhea? Like what's going on in there? Look in the toilet, see if there's weird stuff in there, or if it's looking the way it's supposed to look. Um, you know, the gut is, like you said, responsible for 70 to 80 percent of the immune system it's like it's like what's in your digestive system isn't really in your body yet right your gut should be able to get that stuff out to get rid of the bad bacteria or too much bad bacteria to get rid of those parasites to kill some of the, the organisms and whatnot in your stomach by going through the hydrochloric acid which kind of burns everything and so it doesn't survive in your body however if you have different issues going on the different components of the gut what it allows is for those bugs to not be killed before they get inside of your body. And also if you have something called leaky gut, 
when we talk about that a lot during the sessions, uh, another word for, for it might be um, intestinal hyperpermeability, right? So basically your gut looks like this here. We'll say, for example, the cells are all stacked up in there and they're only supposed to allow nutrients to get through, right? Proteins, fats, carbohydrates, things like that. However, what can happen when a gut breaks down, and this is very, very common, this can be due to stress and the use of birth control pills and, and poor diet and on and on, is those gut that gut lining starts to break apart a little bit. And now it's not just foods getting through. I'm sorry, it's not just like um, a nutrients getting through, but now like bad stuff starting to get through and get into the bloodstream where it's not supposed to be. And your immune system says, hey, what is this? Why is this here? And it starts to attack everything that's coming through. So you start to fire up your immune system. And over time, what can happen is your immune system can tap out right? You can get lots of inflammation from this. You can also develop food sensitivities where unbroken down food particles are slipping their way through and the body says, what is this? Now you become sensitive to all of the foods that you eat, which is uh, not a good thing. And then in the long run, what can happen is autoimmunity. And what that means is that since your gut is breaking down, allowing things to get through that aren't supposed to get through, your immune system says, hey, this piece of um, steak or this little piece of apple or whatever it may be, right, this little strand of amino acids, we'll say, it's starting to look a lot like this person's thyroid or their joints or some other part of their body and the immune system starts to attack that as well and so that's why it's so important to pay attention to the gut i mean disease begins in the gut and i feel like that's something that you know not only patients are missing but their doctors aren't relaying that information to them and so that's why we're doing this event to get the, the information out to the people so they can have great digestive health get all the nutrients that they need and also have their immune systems boosted so they feel really Really good. Yeah, you gave us a snippet of an interview that um, you had with Jeffrey Smith, who is just brilliant when it comes to GMOs, and he really shed light on why some of these inflammatory, leaky gut problems are uh, increasing, and I can't wait to see the rest of that uh, particular interview. That's one of my favorite interviews right there, because uh, I wrote an email about this yesterday. You know, there's a lot of people who are skeptical about genetically modified foods, and rightfully so, because there's not a whole lot of research out there about how bad genetically modified foods are, and that's because nobody wants to do the research because you become kind of vilified for doing that research. It's hard to get funding for that research as well. It's a whole story there, but I wanted to get to the bottom of this GMO issue, so I asked Jeffrey some really hard questions, like the questions that I normally don't hear people who are in this, you know, holistic health, alternative health movement ask, because typically they, they pitch a lot of softballs to him, you know, questions that he's he's answered over and over and over again. So I really wanted to get to the heart of it. So if there's one interview that everybody needs to see, it's the one with Jeffrey Smith about genetically mod modified foods. And you, don't, you don't even have to have digestive problems to watch that. It's just great to watch it and become more aware. You know, I love the fact that you said you were throwing fastballs at him because uh, he is brilliant, and I know he was not shaken by the fastballs. He knows his stuff, so I can't yes. wait to see that. Absolutely. Um, going into tonight, Halloween, trick question. <laughs> not so much, but what are we doing? What What are people, if ghosts and goblins show up at your door tonight, are they going to get, you know, a multicolored uh, high fructose corn syrup in a wrapper or what what are we doing for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. This morning I sent out an email to my list and yesterday I posted on Facebook about like what should I feed the kids. This is my first I just got a house last year, so it's the first time in my life that I'm gonna get trick or treaters. And I don't wanna be the, the weird neighbor. Like I was, that's that weird neighbor who gave us this healthy stuff, this sugar free something, right? <laughs> and um so I haven't quite decided. I have about six hours to figure that thing out. Um I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> there's, a, there's about there's about 160, 170 different suggestions on, on Facebook right now. So I'm going to scroll through those in a couple hours and head over to the store and pick up what I need to pick up. But, you know, it's not going to be Snickers and M&Ms and, you know, whatchamacallits and all the stuff that I got when I was a kid. That That's for sure. You know, I'm leaning toward, like, some uh, maybe some Justin's. Justin's makes these really good um, almond butter cups, I think it is. And so, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I may do something like that. Or I might just do some, some almond butter packets that, that Justin puts out as well. They're actually really good. Uh, there's, like, honey-flavored and maple-flavored and vanilla flavor. So maybe the kids will enjoy that. 
we'll you know, see. yeah, a couple of years ago, one of our good friends, Henry, passed away now in his, you know, 90s. Uh, but, you know, he would answer the door with a uh, basket of carrots and broccoli. <laughs> I'm sure he got his house egged a few times. <laughs> Well, you know, that, that was his, his entrance. That was the trick, and then he provided the treat after that. So the broccoli and carrots were not well received. <laughs> that was great. All right, check out the digestion sessions. Sean, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope we can do this again sometime soon. For sure. Thank you very much, Dr. Haley.